if you're keen on learning Python, especially its application in finance and broader data analysis, you've chosen the right course. My primary aim is to provide you with a solid foundation in Python. By the end of this journey, you will not only be able to analyze and visualize financial data, but also backtest trading strategies effectively. I felt it was important to provide this course for free. So yes, this entire course will not cost you a dime. And for those of you who prefer written formats, we have an illustrated version available on our website. Check the links in the description below. Let me also add that this course is brought to you in collaboration with the Crypto Robot channel. So if you can handle French or subtitles, go check them out. They're really amazing. Now, efficient programming requires the right tools. This is why this chapter zero is dedicated to helping you install and set up all the software that we'll use throughout this course. Let's get started. A few starting words. I'm showing this tutorial for Windows, but if you're using Mac, things would be pretty similar. And if you're using Linux, then things would be a bit different. But if you're a Linux user, chances are you wouldn't need this tutorial. Anyway, to install Python, the first step is to download the Python installer. So for this, we'll head over to python.org slash downloads. You can find all the links needed for this course in the written version of this course on our website. So then we must click on download Python 3.11 and then I'll simply save. Then I can click here. And now begins the first steps of the installation of Python. And I'm going to ask you to pay extra attention to what I say and what I do so we avoid any future problems with the installation. And the first thing I want you to make sure is that you tick this box here. I don't want to go into details, but this is important for Windows to recognize Python properly. Then we'll go to customize installation. Here we want to make sure everything is ticked and we can click on next. Here I want you to add the first box and make sure it's ticked. This will help Windows have the proper permissions. And on the same level, I also suggest that you remove the program files from this path so that Python 3, whatever version you have, is installed directly at the root of the C folder. And finally, we can click on install. Yes, we'll allow. Okay, great, the setup was successful and I'm gonna close. Now, what we wanna do is make sure the Python installation was done properly. So for this, we'll open a console. So come here in the taskbar in the search and type CMD, and then you can press enter. And there we go. We have our console open or sometimes referred to as a terminal. Here we'll type Python space dash dash version and press enter. And there we see that we have displayed the version of Python that we install. And since this is what we got, this means everything went fine. If Python had an issue installing, etc., you would get a mistake. Depending on your OS version, etc., sometimes it's not under the name Python, but Python 3. So you should also check Python 3 version if the previous one didn't work. And you can see for me, it was under the name of Python. So that's why I got an error. So check this one first, and if you get the version, then that's good. Everything went fine. If this doesn't work, check Python 3. And if this works, great. And if it doesn't, then you have to start again the installation and follow exactly the steps that I said. And then there's something else I want to check, and that's pip. So what pip is, it's the Python package manager. So if you need to install other Python packages, you will have to use pip. I'll show you how to do that in a future chapter of this course. Anyway, let me press enter and we can see that it went fine. Same thing, sometimes it is known under the name of pip3. So you should also check that if pip didn't work. Nice, we're set. We can now try our first Python commands. For the console to be able to understand the Python commands that we are going to write, we need to enter what is called the Python interpreter. So with this, we'll simply write Python in our console and press enter. This means we are officially now in a Python program. And you see, for instance, that each line of the console now starts with three of these symbols, which I actually don't know the name. So here I cannot not make you write the first Python command that you will always see in any Python tutorial, the good old print hello world. So for that, we'll write print, open a parentheses, put an apostrophe, then type hello world with a space in between. And then we write another apostrophe, then close the parenthesis. And finally, we can press enter. There you go. We have displayed the text, hello world. 
In practice, what we did is that we used the function called print to print what is inside, and what we wrote inside is what is called a string, so a word if you want, and that's why we use some apostrophes. Anyway, this is just a little teaser. We will learn about all of this in the next chapter of the course. How about we also do a numerical operation? So we can simply write 3 plus 5 should equal 8, and there we go. And congratulations, you may have not realized, but you've just run your first Python program. Now, writing code directly through the console can get quite tedious. So we're going to install a integrated development environment, IDE in short. These really help with programming efficiency, thanks to features like auto-completion, colors to identify what is what, and more. We will go for VS Code. It's really popular, open source, highly customizable, and it even supports other mainstream programming languages like JavaScript, C, and CSS. It's really worth investing some time in learning it. Just like for Python, the first step to install VS Code is to download it. So we'll go to the page and simply click on download for Windows. Then I'll click save. Then I can come here and click. Of course, I need to accept the agreement. Okay. Here I don't care. I can just leave the path as suggest. Here I don't care either. Next. Now here, it is up to you whether you want an icon on your desktop. I do want one, so I'll keep it. Then here, I do suggest that you tick those. It will make it more handy to access VS Code. And then here, I want to make sure these are also ticked as well. So then I can click Next, Install. Great. We have everything installed. That is VS Code to write some code and Python to execute it. So let's write our first program. What I suggest is that you create a folder for this course. And now within this folder, you right click with your mouse. Depending on the Windows version, you might see open with code here, or might, you might have something displayed like see more options and you'll find it in there. So I'll click on open with code. And since this is the first time we open this folder with VS Code, we'll have to give it the proper permissions. I do suggest that you tick this here and then click on yes, I trust the authors. Great, we can close these release notes. And then I will go on this left bar here and right click and then left click on new file. What shall we say? Well, test.py. Note that this extension .py is the extension for Python code. So then I'll press enter. And you see that since it's the first time that we've created a Python file, VS Code has seen that and suggests to us to install the Python extension for VS Code. So we'll click on install and you can see that it is in the installing process. Great, now it's done. If by any chance this pop-up for whatever reason didn't happen to come to the VS Code extensions, you simply have to come here on the extension panel and here you'll have to write the name of the extension that you want and what we wanted is Python and it will pop up here. By the way, you can see that it has been downloaded more than 93 million times. Anyway, while we're here, I would recommend also installing this Python extension pack. This includes a few extensions that will help you code more efficiently. So I'll click on install as well. Great, now we can go back to our code. Then I'll come back on the line one and click. And what shall we write as our first command? Well, let's go back to the mindstone that is print hello world. And now I'll do a little control S to save. Otherwise you can always come here and click save here. Now to execute this code, what we do is come here on this little arrow here and simply click it. And you can see what happened is that it opened a terminal this is the equivalent of the console within VS Code. And you can see that they executed a command within this console, which is C, Python, etc. Basically saying, use Python to execute this test.py file that we just created. Another way we could have simply written, this is quite equivalent, Python test.py. And you see, it executes the file exactly the same. And congratulations again. You've just run your first Python program using VS Code. Now, our last step, and that's to create Jupyter Notebooks. While these are not suited to write long and intricate codes, they're really useful for pedagogical and presentation purposes. We'll be using them a lot. First, what we have to do is install the Jupyter extension, just like we did to handle the Python file. We need that extension for the Jupyter notebooks. So I'll come here and then click on install. And that was done super fast. Okay, we can go back to our file manager. And now what we're going to do is create a Jupyter notebook. So for that, we'll create a new file and we'll call it test.py. 
ipyynb, where .ipyynb is the extension for Jupyter Notebooks. Let me press enter, and there we go, we have our notebook here. And as you can see, the display is different. A Jupyter Notebook has cell, so this is a cell, you'll be able to create other ones, and what you do is that you can execute each cell one after the other. This is what makes it a nice pedagogical and presentation tool. Anyways, what shall we do? Well, let's go for a print hello world again. Now to execute this cell, what you do is either click here or you can simply go for a control enter on your keyboard. And you can see that this time the results of what was done in the cell is displayed just under that cell. Now, if you want to add a new cell, either you come here on plus code, but what you can also do is hover your mouse down a bit and you have a plus code here. Plus markdown is more to write text. We'll see that in the future. So let me simply write plus code. And here we go. We have our new cell. So let's write a little Python program and say that A is equal to two plus three. And then we'll write next line print A. And then I'll do a control enter. And you can see that it has displayed the results of what is in A. And what we put in A is two plus three. So A is now a variable and we use an operation here. But maybe I'm going a bit too far for now. Types, variables, operation are indeed what we're going to look into in the next chapter of this course. And that's it with this preparation chapter. If you want to support this channel, the best way is to share this course with anybody who might like it. And of course, don't forget a little like and a subscription. See you next time and take care.